All right, we're back with a quick talk about a component of social and emotional learning. And I'm going to talk about this uh, category that is identified among the five main categories that is managing emotions. And those of you who know my work know that I've been producing a series of podcasts over a number of years called the Evolve Podcast, and that's on iTunes. It's also at KalaniDoss.com. There's a whole set of of podcasts over there uh, that deal largely with this idea. And, and so some of these are my ideas. Some of these, you know, are coming from other people. But I want to talk about emotions just for a second because it's really important. Emotions, you know, we can get tripped up on them. And your ability to successfully manage your emotions, you know, it, it has a huge effect because um, if you don't, if you're not able to manage your emotions effectively throughout your life, you know, starting whenever you're young, well, at any point, you could end up, it, it could end up influencing um, things like your ability to maintain healthy relationships or functional relationships, um, your ability to partake in gainful employment, you know, to be employable. It could even affect your ability to uh, manage whatever you need to do just to maintain a house or a car or a job, all those things. And even, I mean, if you can't manage your emotions, you could end up in big trouble, you know. So managing your emotions is, is important, and it may not seem like a big deal, but it adds up. So I want to talk about a couple concepts, uh, and just, you know, in, and this is one these are all ideas that are open for discussion. This is, I'm just sharing some of my thoughts with you. Of course, there are lots of other ideas out there. You probably have some good ones too. You can leave them in the comments below this video. So this is not an exhaustive discussion about managing one's emotions, um, and it's just from my perspective, right? But I welcome all your ideas and comments, certainly. So what are emotions? Um, I have a really quick kind of definition that I like to use, and that is that emotions are the physical um, feeling of a unconscious thought or belief. Um, emotions are the place where our mind, our subconscious, sometimes our mind, I think triggered by our thoughts, but often pro propelled <laughs> by our unconscious beliefs and um, memories, you know, things that we have, thoughts, memories, feelings, um, and it's where they meet. And that is this feeling. What is an emotion? A lot of the times it is a feeling, right? You could describe a feeling like tension or energy. Uh, happiness has its own feeling. Depression has a feeling, maybe a weight. So they are somewhat somatic. In other words, they are physical. And then there's this uh, often kind of a cognitive component to them, right? Like we either like that emotion, we like it, we're attracted to that, we desire that emotion, or we are not, it's not desirable, and we might want to push it away or wish that we didn't have it or get rid of it or shove it, you know, down. So emotions have a certain kind of energetic body. Um, my belief, again, is that every emotion that we have is like getting a little packet of information but we're not quite sure what it means. And so our job, or something that we can do, is to investigate, right? I'm having this reaction, I'm having this emotional reaction to the situation, I wonder what that's about, right? So the, number one, curiosity, become curious about what it means, especially, now, for the purposes of our conversation here, uh, let's, we're talking about big emotions, right? The kinds of emotions that might cause a problem. Emotions are great. There's no problem with emotions. In fact, some people could probably use to develop their capacity to have and feel and express emotions a little bit more, right? Sometimes men get you know, hit, hit with that. Uh, you know, I wish you'd feel, uh, show your emotions a little bit more. I can't read you, right? Um, regardless, we're talking about the kinds of emotions or emotional reactions that could cause us problems, right? Overreacting having a tantrum over something that seems relatively small. Um, so we know that that stuff happens, right? And we also know that similar events, events that happen now that seem like 
past events, right? You can call them traumas or whatever. They tend to group together. And a lot of the time, the energy that we felt or the frustration or the emotion that we felt from a series of similar events somehow adds to the present feeling, right? You can imagine that. If you're not sure, just to take some time after you're done listening to this to think about that. Maybe you have an experience with that. So what do we do? The first thing, wow, acknowledge it. Wow, I'm really upset right now. You know, woo, I am feeling frustrated, right? Don't try to shove it away. Just become curious, but acknowledge it. You have to start with truth, truthfulness, right? I am feeling super angry, all right? There's nothing wrong with being angry. We get angry, we get frustrated, we get happy, we get sad, we feel all emotions. It's just things that we feel. We're human. So don't make that wrong, all right? Don't add guilt and punishment and suppression on top of just having an emotion. You're, you have an emotion. All right, awesome. <laughs> You're a human. Congratulations. Now what? I wonder why. Well, let, let me think about this. Well, even not think about it. Here, here's something that you could try, and I do this, and I've talked about this in the podcast. It's a little exercise, but I think it could be helpful. Try it. Sit somewhere where you can have a little, you know, peace and quiet. Not, you're not distracted. You can close your eyes if you want. And just imagine that that emotional energy is a, a little being, like a little child or somebody, and, and they've come to you, and they're tugging on your shirt, tugging on your dress, tugging on your blouse, and they're saying, I'm frustrated. I need help. Hey, pay attention to me. Because isn't that kind of what's happening? And then you say, yes, what can I do for you? How can I help you? How can I help? I'm here for you. And you treat that emotion, that little package of energy, just like you would your grandchild or your child. All right, with the same care and the same love and attention and see what happens and then tell me because I bet you a nickel that once you do that, not only, well, you may or may not learn anything about what that energy was about, but my belief is that by acknowledging it and welcoming it and asking it what it needs and sending compassion and care and love to that energy that it will then say, oh, never mind. That's all I needed. I just needed to be acknowledged and felt and heard, whatever you want to, you know, any word you want to use there is fine. I just needed somebody to pay attention to me and listen to me for a second. But you know what? It's okay. I'm going to float away. I'm going to dissipate. Now, not every single trauma in your life will vanish magically if you do that. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that take a minute, go through that little mental exercise and see what happens. It tends to work for me. Uh, and you might get some information. You might get an insight. You might get a greater understanding of why. Because, oh, because this thing reminds me of that thing. And that thing was really upsetting. But guess what? This thing is not that thing. Is it? It's not. <laughs> okay, so little strategies like this can be really helpful. Uh, you can try them out. I, I think we should all try some strategies out for ourselves so we understand what they are, how to do them, whether they work for us or not. And then if you find a couple things that work, share them with somebody else, just like I'm doing now. There's no magic involved. There's no, there's nothing to buy. You don't have to spend any money. It's all free, all right? <laughs> you could do this within the context of, for example, something I've done in the context of a musical experience, like a guided imagery journey, right? So you're guiding people, you're holding people in a music space where they feel supported and comfortable and safe because there's a music bubble around them, right? And then you can gently give people some prompts or some cues, you know, just kind of like I did with you, um, maybe a little more open so they can have their own experience. And then you give them time. Um, and then you're supportive. You're there if they need you. All right. 
This is something I've done many times for people in music therapy at uh, retreats and different settings. So I hope that's helpful. Um, last thing I want to say about our emotions is, of course, that they are tied to our mind, uh, which is very busy and active and always trying to figure out what's the problem? You know, what, how can I figure out the puzzle here? And so our minds tend to take a feeling and kind of run with it and do a lot of what ifs and compare it to other stuff. Um, you know, we're pattern seeking creatures, so our minds always want to match things up and categorize things. And that's why we often end up thinking about uh, a past trauma that's similar to a present trauma, because that's what our mind does. It's trying to match it, right? And it goes through the Rolodex and it looks up stuff that kind of is kind of like whatever's happening now. So it can see if there's a similarity or a pattern. You have to know that's what your mind does. It's good at it. It's faster than you. It's going to do it. You can't stop it. So don't worry about it. Just let it do it and know that, you know, this thing is not that thing. So you don't have to feel that energy that you felt that you don't have to stack up all that stuff and get the cumulative effect of all that other stuff that happened in the past, um, which that's something that does happen for people quite a lot. All right. I'm going to conclude with that. I just want to wish you well. And if you have any helpful and kind comments that you could add below, please do. And uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me uh, on this or any other topic uh, for social emotional learning or music mindfulness, which is my teaching, you can contact me at kalanimusic.com. You can see or hear the Evolve podcast at kalanidas.com. And you can connect with me more at patreon.com slash kalani. Thanks for watching.